Hello and welcome to this TechVox instructional video. My name's Sam, and today we're going to be talking about cameras. Specifically, we're going to be looking at PTZ and EPTZ cameras and discussing their differences, the pros and cons of each, and why to choose one over the other. So, without further ado, let's get into it. PTZ stands for Pan, Tilt, Zoom, which describes how this type of camera moves. A PTZ camera has motors that allow it to pan its lens from side to side, tilt it up and down, and zoom in and out. PTZ cameras are very popular in the AV industry, and with good reason. They're powerful, versatile, and come in a lot of different varieties. So, what are some of the strengths of PTZ cameras? Their main strength is their range of motion. Because they're able to rotate so freely, PTZ cameras can look in almost any direction. This means that a single PTZ camera can potentially cover video of a huge area and is great for applications where your subjects could be anywhere in the room. PTZ cameras also have optical zoom, which means that they can zoom in or out without losing any resolution. So, now that we've talked about what PTZ cameras are good at, what are some areas where they fall short? For one thing, PTZ cameras are complex. With so many moving parts, PTZ cameras can be more prone to failure and require more space so that they can move freely. This means that your options for where to mount them are going to be more limited, and they're going to be on the lower end of expected lifespan. PTZ cameras are also going to be more expensive than other options. As we've already established, PTZ cameras are complicated, sophisticated pieces of equipment, and they're generally going to have a price tag to match. Now, the exact numbers will vary by manufacturer, but you can generally expect PTZ cameras to cost at least twice as much as cheaper alternatives. Finally, PTZ cameras must physically move to get from shot to shot. No matter how quickly and smoothly your PTZ camera changes position, there will be some amount of time during which it's in motion. This isn't a deal breaker for most people, but it can be undesirable if you're going to be switching subjects frequently. Now that we've covered what PTZ cameras are and what they do well, it's time to talk about EPTZ. EPTZ stands for Electronic Pan Tilt Zoom and it's an all-digital alternative to PTZ that uses some clever tricks to simulate the motion of a PTZ camera, but without the moving parts. How exactly does it do this? Let's take a look. Most EPTZ cameras have 4K or better lenses that can see a wide area of the room where they're installed, but this view isn't what they output. Instead, an EPTZ camera lets you select an area of interest from within that overall view. By doing this, the camera lets you simulate panning and tilting by moving around that area of interest within the overall view, giving you the same effect as a PTZ camera's rotation. Now that we understand how EPTZ cameras work, let's examine some of their unique advantages. One of the major perks of EPTZ cameras is their durability. Because they don't have all of the moving parts of PTZ cameras, EPTZ cameras can have a simpler and more compact design, making them less prone to wear and tear from everyday use. Another benefit of EPTZ cameras is that they can switch seamlessly between two different views without any of the intervening movement. This makes for cleaner, more professional transitions between subjects, all without requiring a second camera. Finally, EPTZ cameras are much less expensive to produce than their conventional PTZ counterparts. There are two main drawbacks EPTZ cameras face when compared to their PTZ counterparts. EPTZ cameras are inherently limited in their range because they use digital zoom rather than optical. This means that the further you zoom in, the lower the resolution of the resulting image. Because of this, EPTZ cameras work best when within 10 to 20 feet of their subjects. Because they can't physically turn, EPTZ cameras can only ever provide video of subjects that are within their fixed field of view. This means that they're best used when subjects will always be in the same place, such as a conference room or the front of a classroom. So now that we know how PTZ and EPTZ cameras work, which one is right for you? In general, you can follow these simple guidelines. You should opt for a PTZ camera in particularly large rooms, such as collegiate lecture halls or amphitheaters, or in rooms where you're limited in where you can mount a camera. 
as these cases will allow a PTZ camera's range of motion and optical zoom to sh really shine. You should also choose PTZ if the camera will need to provide video of subjects in multiple different areas or in high-end systems that require the very best video quality. EPTZ is the better choice in smaller rooms, such as conference rooms or smaller classrooms, or where the camera can be mounted closer to the subjects, and in applications where subjects will generally be in the same area. Thank you for watching this video about PTZ and EPTZ cameras, the differences between them, and which you should pick depending on your application. We hope you learned something new, and we look forward to seeing you next time. Goodbye!